Hey everyone, it's Don again. Welcome back to my science garage. It's been a while. Uh, I haven't had a lot to show off, so I, I did find something though a little while ago, and I've took my time. I've taken my time. Sorry, misspoke. Said the wrong past tense. I've taken my time learning about it, so I can meaningfully explain it today. See, today I wanted to do another technology teardown for everybody. My wife and I were cleaning the basement a couple of uh, weeks back and we found an old DVD player that's just been in a box since we moved into our house like five years ago. Haven't used it. Why? Because DVDs are on their way out. Well, they're completely out. And, you know, we have a couple of Blu-ray players. Those are almost on their way out. So before they're completely gone and people stop wondering how they work, I thought I would take apart one of these DVD players for you and kind of explain how it works and how CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, and I don't know if you remember HD DVDs, they were out immediately as soon as they came in. Blu-rays won that fight. Uh, show you a little bit about how they work. Okay, here it is. You can see it's an old silver scuffed up DVD player. I took all the screws out of the housing. They're right there. I don't know why I'm keeping them. It's not like I'm ever gonna have to put this thing back together. Um, anyway, so here we go. What's inside the case? Ah, ta-da! It's empty! DVD players are magic! That's not true. Check this out. I actually took this all apart before I started filming because I wanted to know how everything worked. This is the guts of the DVD player. That, just a case. That's just to hold all of this together. And in fact, if I actually, like, plug this uh, into a TV using the output uh, output uh, holes right there, the outlets, then it would still actually work. Well, it might actually still work. Here's the problem. In order to get to something I wanted to show underneath here, I actually had to cut off this chunk right here that holds the disc in place. Uh, so it, if it worked, it wouldn't work very well, probably. So anyway, here's what we got. Let's trace it from the power end. This cord plugs into the wall, obviously. Runs through here, powers this circuit board. This circuit board is wired into this circuit board right here, which is also wired into the disc reader itself, this whole middle area, and is wired into that, which is, it would be right here. It's the display panel that says like, welcome, uh, play, stop, and tells you how far you are in the movie or whatever. And that doo -doo -doo -doo, is wired over to these buttons. And these buttons go here. So when you press down on this, all you're really doing is pressing down on one of these. So this here is the power button. And I can actually turn this on and it still functions, like I said. But before I do that and show you a bit about the disc itself and, and how this thing works, let's zoom in a little closer. So I did a little bit of research and just like I said when I took apart the Sphero, I am in no means an electronics expert, but I can tell you what some of these components are. Anywhere here where you see on the circuit board where it says C, that's a capacitor. A capacitor stores and releases voltage. Uh, electricity flowing through all of these components here of the circuit board. Anywhere where you see R, you see one of these little striped bits like that one, that's a resistor. A resistor resists the flow of electricity. It slows it down a little bit. So we got a lot of electricity coming in here. We can't have it all go through to all the components at once. Right here, it's a transformer. Now a transformer does what it says on the box. It transforms electricity. It either takes a low voltage to a high voltage or it transforms high voltage to a low voltage. I'm not gonna pretend to know which one this one does. I could not find it in my online research. Over here, we have a voltage regulator. This makes sure that the voltage flowing through this entire circuit board doesn't get too high and start to burn out the entire system. But if it does, we have one last resort, right there. We have a fuse, and that, oh, let's see if I can get it in focus. There we go. There's a tiny coil of wire in there, and if we get too much voltage flowing through here, that wire will get so hot it will break, and when it's in two pieces, the electricity won't be able to jump across it, and it'll stop completely. The electricity will kind of like not have anywhere to flow once it reaches here. And if that ever happened, the thing about fuses is they're removable. Ugh. 
I probably have to pop that out with a screwdriver and I don't want to risk breaking the glass. But you would just put a new fuse right in there. So now we trace it over to here. And I feel pretty comfortable saying, based on the fact that this doesn't have any resistors or anything like that, this is the computer side of the DVD player. Uh, we've got a couple of integrated circuits here. So this is all one big circuit. An integrated circuit is like a smaller circuit that's all put together in one little chip that you put onto a big circuit board. Uh, I don't know what any of these does. I was unable to find out what they do. Back here, this is where you plug in the TV for video and uh, audio input. So old school, yellow video, white, red audio. And then we have these, uh, the RGB cables, which I think they have an official name, but I can't remember what they are, which just puts out a little more signal, a little better signal. This is called S-Video Cable. If you were in college around 2002, like I was, that was the coolest thing. If you had S-Video, you could plug your computer into the TV, and I know you all take that kind of stuff for granted these days, but in 2002, uh, that was hot. Okay, so now obviously this feeds information to that because this needs to be able to know what this tells it about what time uh, you are in the movie, what channel you are in the, excuse me, in the DVD, whatever. And then these buttons feed information to this screen to say play, pause, fast forward, whatever, which feeds back through to here to control what you're doing with the DVD. And it all gets its power from this big circuit over here. But the centerpiece, of course, is the disc reading unit itself. This, let me, turn it on here. So I'm going to hit the power button and oh, I forgot to plug it in. Hold on. Hold, please. Ah, there we go. It's all plugged in. Okay. So I'm going to hit the power button. Have to actually have it plugged into electricity to work, just so you know. There we go. Oh, it says hello. Outputting information. It is now trying to load. Oh, there's no disc. That is correct. There is no disc. I didn't put one in there. So I'm going to turn this off again because I want to show you something else. When I turn it on, watch what happens here. This is very important. Here we go. That, my friends, is a tiny little laser. And that laser is what allows this whole thing to function, okay? It reads DVDs, and it's kind of similar to, I'm going to throw way back now, but it's back in fashion now, it's kind of similar to vinyl records. For example, my original first pressed copy of Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. If I pull this out of the sleeve, get close up, you see there are tiny little grooves, little channels that start at the outside of the record and it runs in one big super long spiral till you get to the middle of the record and then you reach the last track and you've got to turn it over to side two, okay? DVDs, CDs, Blu-rays are similar with one major difference. On a record, on a record here, these grooves go up and down microscopically, and the needle that reads them actually translates the movement up and down like a tiny little mountain range into sound waves that are then converted into electricity and then the bag of the sound waves and the speakers, and they go out and you get the signal, okay? You hear the music. With a DVD, it's slightly different. Now, I have actually scraped most of the foil off the front of this uh, old blank DVD. Uh, you can see I didn't do a very good job, but hey, I used the tools I had because I wanted to be able to see what happens when I put it in here. But in a DVD, if this actually had information on it, there would be a spiral starting at the inside for a lot of DVDs and then the outside for some other ones. But starting at the inside, instead of just a line of up and down hills and valleys to encode the information, it's dots and no dots. It's like little pits and then nothing, pit, nothing, pit, nothing, pit, 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 nothing, nothing, pit, nothing, pit, nothing. And the laser is able to read the information by seeing how much of itself is reflected back from a pit versus the smooth area in between. One of them is a zero, one of them is a one, and if you're not sure why that's important, zeros and ones are at the basis of how all computing works in the world. It's called binary language. So the data encoded, whether it's music or a video or a video game, is at its basis a series of ones and zeros burned into the DVD as a series of little, like, hills with nothing in between them. And the laser... 
Let's turn it off and back on again. Starts at the inside and reads the information all the way to the outside if you're just going straight through. Now it's going to try to read. I just turned it back on and it's not going to be able to because this is not a functional DVD. But if I hadn't scraped off the, the foil coating, then you wouldn't be able to see the laser working through it. There we go. Error. It knows there's no information on this disc. It knows it's all messed up. I, hey, I didn't tell you to do that. Hold on. Where's eject? How do I get, get, get back in there, you? But the laser has the capability of moving back and forth, depending on what part of the disc you want to read it. So say you want to skip to the middle of the movie, It'll go, and you'll hear it, and then it'll spin and whir and play, doo -doo 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 -doo, reading that spiral of tiny, tiny microscopic dots and valleys in between until you see the entire movie. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a DVD player.